Hi musical architects! In this video we're going to look at busing. How does it help us create better and more effective mixes? It's such a great technique that once you use it you will apply it in probably every song. It's been around for that reason for a long time. I'm going to demonstrate it in Logic, but you can apply those principles in any software once you understand the principle. Let's check it out. What is busing? In a nutshell, think of an orchestra. You never think of 100 people playing. You think of first violin, second violin. You think of cellos, brass, percussion. So imagine you had a theater for each one of those sections on a mixing console. And you could simply bring up a group or bring it down. That would be so much easier for your brain than thinking of each single violin or percussive instrument. The same is true for our mix. If we assign each instrument group to a channel strip called bus, then we have easy control over the group of those instruments. For example, you want to bring down the overall drum level or bring up the guitar. Very easy to do when you have one fader controlling it all. In the next section, we will do that with all the instruments. But for now, we're gonna use this technique with the vocal. And we're gonna assign the backing vocals to a bus and we're gonna assign the lead vocals to a different bus. And Logic has a really ingenious way of doing so or letting us do so by using something called the track stack. Make a long story short here, this is what I have here already. If you look at my screen, you see this little triangle button. But how did we get there? It's so hard for me to not work with that that I, just to be organized, had to do this already. But I'm gonna go backwards. So I'm gonna take these tracks and drag them out. So, normally when you create a vocal track, you see that whatever track you select, there's a channel strip on the left giving you an indication of effects and the sound would travel like in a mixing board from top to bottom. At the bottom you have the fader regulating the volume. So if I solo this, the sound would play through it and then go down here and I can regulate the volume of that particular track. Then I can add effects. One by one the sound travels through each effect. If I say I need to get a better handle of on my dynamics, I could add a compressor and I can regulate all these effects. The times. Bring the vocals more up front. I could also add a reverb right here. There are times, there are but that's only for this particular track. So whatever is unique to this track, say it has too much bass, or I want more distortion, but only on this track, I put in as an insert effect. That's mixing one-on-one -on -one here. So whatever you put on that channel is affecting that channel, not the next. But if I have a group of instruments, I might want to affect them all together. Say my backing vocals act as a group. Clearly, they sing and they become one instrument, if you will. So here, they feel like one. So instead of putting an EQ, a compressor, and a reverb on each individual track, we can group them together, we can bust them together, and then add the effect to the overall group, if they are very similar in nature. So a bunch of backing vocals, a bunch of violins, something like that. How do we create a bus? Normally, each channel, the signal goes top to bottom, as I mentioned, and then is sent to the stereo output. But since I want to bundle all my lead vocals together, I can shift click top to bottom, and you select them, and then either shift command D, or because it's track related, we can go to our track menu and say create track stack. Right here. You see also the shortcuts. Shift command D. The way I remember this, Command D duplicates a track. So it's not that hard for me to remember Shift Command D. You can do that with your left hand very easily. So I select my tracks and go Shift Command D and create a summing stack. Summing is another word for bussing. And when I do that, you see that they are going to a bus. So instead of going to the output, they're taking a little detour. So I'm going to call this my vocal bus. And if you look at the mixer again, all these guys are going to bus 6. So in other words, lead vocal, double click bus 6, ah, it goes up here, input bus 6, and then this bus goes all the way to the end of the mixer. So if I double click it again, it will lead me there, bam, to the stereo output. 
Why taking this detour? I'll give you a really quick example. So I've created a bus for the backing vocals as well. And so these guys play into bus 5. Bus 5 is right here, input bus 5. You see that when I click on each single track, and bus 5 will show up on the right side. If I'm clicking on this one, bus 6 it shows up on this side. Why do we bus things together? A very practical example. Say I have all these backing vocals. I'm going to turn off all the effects here. I can do that simultaneously when I shift select them, shift click them. Let's say I have my backing vocals. Maybe it's muddy. So instead of adding an EQ to each track, which is appropriate because they're all a little bit different, but I could try to just take my group, my bus. I select it here and I'm going to add an EQ and say with the analyzer, see how the frequency responses and say, what we're going to do in mixing a lot, let's take out what I don't need. No difference here, it's just avoiding rumble that could happen down here in the lowest frequencies. Vocals start around here, let's say in around 200 hertz range, and where are they thick? I'm going to thin them out with a low shelf. A low shelf simply doesn't take it out all the way, but it lowers shelves, all the frequencies beneath a certain center frequency, if you will. So I can... I can thin them out that way without even adding anything. Without. And if I wanted to make it brighter, then I could add something. So here, I could just thin them out a bit. I could say... And what did I do? I just EQ'd the whole bus, the whole group. And I could do this with different effects. Here's where it gets fun. On these, I don't want to add effect to each one of those. So I can go to my bus, because remember, this sounds like a unit of instruments. And right on the bus itself, I can go and I use these scents. Let's add our shorts. Add some medium verb. Add some stair delay. I hope this makes sense with the example of the backing vocals. But what about the rest of the instruments? What if you could simplify your mixing process by combining all sonically similar instruments into groups or buses? For example, acoustic guitars, pads, arpeggios, basses, drums. Make a group track stack or a bus for each one of those and then mix from the outside in and see how far you can go before you go and spend hours on each single track. I hope it's gonna help you making your mixing process a little easier and not get overloaded with too many tracks. Let me know how it goes and if there's any questions. Thanks so much for watching.